Hi everyone! Today we're going to be making curry, which is actually one of the very popular um, dish that a lot of people order at Asian restaurants. And as you know, there's all types of curry, um, from Indian curry, which is actually probably really popular. A lot of people are more familiar with that. It's very spicy. I'm not a big fan of the very, very spicy curry, so that's why I don't usually make Indian style curry. So I like to do more basic, simple curry. I'm influenced a lot from what I grew up in Hawaii eating, which is a little more Japanese style curry that's used a lot in the plate lunches. That's really great. Um, and then I also throw in some of the Thai influence. So what we're going to make today is a simple curry, but it, it sort of uses all those influences of my upbringing, but I try to keep it really basic so it's easy to do. Now most people will, will say, well, if you're a, a fancy chef, then you should make the curry spice yourself, but like I said, that can get really complicated. It can cost a lot of money hunting down the sort of different spices to build your curry. So I like to just get the ready-made ones you just get at the stores and then use that. Now it can come in two forms. One is the powder form, which is what we're going to use today. And I like to use this brand. So the, the brand really makes a difference in, in terms of what sort of taste you get. I like this one. It, it works really well. It's called SMB. Um, oriental curry powder. It's a yellow curry and it's still on the mild side so it reminds me a lot of the, the curry that's made in Hawaii. Now sometimes I want to get a little more authentic flavoring than um, especially when I'm making Thai curry so I'll use the paste which is um, this one is a, a Penang curry paste so it definitely is more of that Thai flavoring. The paste is a little bit harder to work with so I, like, I usually just go with the curry uh, powder when I want to make it really fast. Another um, important ingredient in curry is the milk. What I found though that is really nice is I started using coconut cream, which is a lot more thicker and richer than just milk. So this really makes your curry nice and smooth. So when you can find coconut cream, then you should definitely use that. So the other ingredient is the protein. I, you can make beef. Uh, shrimp, uh, chicken, and that's what we're going to do today is make chicken curry. So I have here three chicken thighs that I've cu cut into pieces. You want to make sure that all the pieces are kind of even um, so that they all cook evenly. And then we're going to marinate it now. Uh, so, so I'll show you sort of the simple basic ingredients I use to marinate. I start with white pepper and then put a teaspoon of that. And then sesame oil, of course, for that nice aroma that you get from that. So a tablespoon of sesame oil. And then, of course, soy sauce. I think soy sauce give it, gives it a nice body. So I'll let that sit for about 10 minutes, and then we can start cooking our curry. Okay, we're going to start making our curry by first browning the chicken. So I have a pan. Um, that I've warmed up with some oil, about two tablespoons, and then I have my chicken that we've been marinating, and then I'm just going to toss it all in. And spread it out. So now that we have our chicken brown, I flip it over to brown the other side. We'll add in our ingredients that we have. We have one clove of garlic that I minced really well. So we'll throw that in. This is one small onion. I, yet, I like to use the sweet onion and oh, I diced onion. it. Nice. Now I'm really cooking down the onion to, so that it, it lose some of the bitter now edge. Now that we've got our onion going, then we add in the broth. I have one can of chicken broth. This is about one and a half cups. So I toss that in. I always think it's a, a good tip that before you throw in the curry that you warm up the powder because that really brings out sort of the aroma and the flavoring of the spices that's in your curry powder. So I'm going to use two tablespoons of curry powder. Now the other thing I said I don't really do too much but since I do have um, ground cumin, I like to add that to, to the curry, just to give it another dimension. Cumin's a little bit 
more of an earthy flavor to me and I think that gives the, uh, the curry a nice different element. Boy, my kitchen's crowded. Okay, so now that we've got the curry in there, we're just going to warm it up a little bit, get the heat going, and you know it's ready when you can actually smell the spices, which, which I'm actually smelling a little bit now. So in a way, we're kind of like toasting, toasting the curry powder. Hey, here's our curry with the um, chicken and onions and garlic stewing for a bit. And we've got our toasted curry powder, and I'm just going to throw that all in. Okay, so we're going to add our vegetables. So first in is our carrots. This is two carrot sticks, about one cup. So that just goes right in. Now normally I'll cover this and let this cook for about five minutes, basically to give the carrots a head start. Uh, because carrots do take a little bit longer than potatoes, which is the other ingredient we're going to put in. But since I'm doing this video and I don't really have much time, I'm going to throw the potatoes in too. At the same time. And then we kind of mix that all in. The temperature of the, the curry might go down a little bit when you add in the cold vegetables. So you might want to monitor your temperature to make sure you have that nice steady simmer. So that's it for our vegetables. We'll let that cook for about another 20 minutes. Again, we're just waiting for the vegetables to get tender and then we'll be ready so to eat This is what I do to add a little difference to my curry. It looks great now. The, the carrots cooking down, the potatoes pretty much done. Um, so when it's almost done, I'm going to add these sugar snap peas because it's in season. And I like it nice and crunchy. So that's why I add this in the end, so that it doesn't cook too long. It just kind of warms it up. What it also does is it really adds a nice burst of color, I think, to the curry. So if you have peas, you know, if it's in season, throw it in. But, you know, I like to have a bit of a snap to it, so put it near the end when you're almost done. So now since we're almost done with the curry, we're going to add the last major ingredient. That's the coconut cream. So I have one cup of coconut cream. I'm just going to toss that right in. The can actually gives you more than one cup. Um, but cream, of course, can be a lot of fat. So I try not to put the entire can. I put about a cup, and I think that's good enough. Okay, we're in the final stage of making our curry. We've got all our major ingredients in there, the coconut cream, the sugar snap peas that I added at the end. The vegetables are all tender. Now what I'm going to do is add cornstarch to thicken it. This is like about two to three tablespoons of cornstarch. I've kind of um, added it in with some water to make it kind of get in there easier. And of course it helps if the curry is kind of like bubbling or, or really hot because um, that kind of activates the curry. Okay, uh, so now we're ready to serve up our curry. I have here some steamed rice. I usually eat brown rice because it's healthy for you. So that's always good. Now you can do um, jasmine rice for a little bit more flavoring or if you want to get fancy you can do basmati rice. Add in some raisins and um, nuts in it to kind of give it that Indian sort of twist to it. But I like to be healthy, so we're going to do brown rice. And we just scoop up our curry, get some chicken in there, get some peas. I don't really need too much sauce. And then we're all set. Enjoy!